now uh, we have a talk about 5G and the security. 5G is going to be pr the prevalent communication technology of the future, and therefore uh, security is of, of the utmost importance. Um, in the next 45 minutes, Vadim is going to talk about us about the security of 5G and how secure it is compared to its predecessors. Thank you. And that thing, take it away. Yeah. So, hello everyone. Um, pleasure to be here and uh, present here this presentation about 5G security evolution. Um, so, I'm Vadim Pariev, I'm working for Swisscom uh, in Bern actually, so I came here uh, from Bern to deliver this presentation. Uh, I'm working as a security consultant, as a network security consultant uh, for our networks department, and I'm also responsible for 5G security. Uh, not only, but for 5G as well, and this presentation is about that. So, let's move on. Um, this is the agenda of today's talk. Um, uh, first of all, would like to highlight that um, we will talk about 5G security in comparison mainly with, with existing mobile network technology, which is 4G or LTE, uh, which is uh, quite widely used for many years everywhere, um, which I think is a good case because um, LTE was, before 5G, the most advanced uh, in terms of security and other features, mobile network technology, and now 5G is, is there and it's coming. Um, that's why it's interesting to compare how, the, how do these technologies compare. So that's what we will see. So the agenda looks like this. Uh, first, I will talk about Swisscom a bit uh, and about 5G in Swisscom. Um, then we will see and touch, uh, touch a bit um, uh, such a topic like mobile network threat landscape. So in general, what threats um, uh, can be for mobile network from, from different, different malicious actors. Uh, then we will see uh, what are the 5G use cases. So basically, why is 5G there? What, what can it be used for? Then we will have a small 5G system overview. So it's um, not a lot, but uh, it's necessary to understand the, the whole security topics in the 5G. Then we'll touch a bit uh, the 5G security challenges as they are you might kind of see them somewhere in the media, in the, in the press, uh, some, some articles asking is 5G secure, is it more or less secure, etc. So what challenges are there on the market? And then uh, the most important uh, part of this presentation is uh, these 5G security enabling technologies. So basically the technologies which enable uh, the, the 5G technology to answer these challenges and to, to mitigate the possible threats. And then in the end, we'll see some useful links, um, and uh, I will speak about starting uh, possibilities of starting a career in Swisscom shortly, uh, if that would be interesting for you. Uh, so let's start. Um, first one. Swisscom. So you know what Swisscom is. Definitely, and here are some figures about us. So basically about 6.6 .6 million subscribers, uh, of them 1.5 million Volta subscribers. So we have 25 million of voice minutes per day, uh, 15 months, in 15 months we have doubling of mobile data, this, what, this is what we observed about 7,500 antenna locations, uh, 17,000 public VLAN access points, if we talk about radio access networks. And what is important to know or to mention here is that we have 99% population coverage for existing technologies 3G and 4G in Switzerland, and we have currently 90% population coverage for 5G. So this, these are the current figures uh, of Swisscom. And what we will focus on today is this uh, green box. Uh, basically, the 5G is how secure is it, how it is deployed, etc. Um, so um, here it is a coverage map, uh, which uh, 
shows the 5G and other technologies coverage in Switzerland, so you can, you can check it yourself on this link. Um, yeah, and um, as I said, this is 90% population coverage. So the, Swi the Switzerland for 90% is covered with, with 5G. And uh, the plans are, this is not formal, but the plans are to reach uh, 80, 80, uh, 98 uh, percentage of population coverage by the end of this year. We, we had such a plans, so hopefully we will see it. Um, yes. Um, so basically, to summarize, Switzerland is quite well, the population of Switzerland is quite well covered with, with 5G technology currently. Uh, let's uh, now look on the mobile network threat landscape. Um, what does it look like? Um, um, uh, let's start with the following. So here, on the bottom, you see the generic um, picture, how does the mobile network look like, any mobile network. It could be a 5G network or 4G network or 3G network. The generic structure is the same. So it is basically, first of all, the devices, the mobile phones here. Uh, then it is the radio access networks, basically the base stations or antennas, you can simply say. Then we have something what is called transport network or a backhaul network. Sometimes it's called in technical terms, which connects these radio access networks to the to the main brain of the network. This is the core or cloud, uh, core network or or cloud cloud network. Usually, uh, currently it's deployed in cloud. Uh, then we have uh, something what is named here as management and analytics. So in reality, it's a very huge amount of uh, systems uh, which are available. Uh, um, on the operator network, which basically support the function of this complex infrastructure. And in the end, uh, we have this internet and other networks, basically, uh, block. So basically what you do when you call from one mobile to, one, to another mobile, uh, your call goes like this to the core network and then goes to the another mobile phone. Or if you call to another mobile operator, your call goes from the mobile phone to the external network. Or if you surf the web, your, your uh, session goes from the phone to the internet. So very simple. But what is important to say that uh, from security perspective, um, you can see these uh, red um, <coughs> bad guys here. <laughs> so uh, these bad guys or potential hackers, potential intruders, attackers, uh, they can be everywhere. That's uh, that what it, this network, uh, this um, picture shows. So uh, of course, uh, one of the primary um, places which need to be protected is this um, kind of interface between the devices and the radio access, basically the radio interface. Uh, since it's everywhere, it's in the air, it's unprotected, so if someone, a bad guy, has a technology to intercept calls, to hear communications or, or SMS or whatever, then uh, he can do it. Yeah. So, so I must say that this interface is... Uh, is the most, so to say, protected interface in this in this overall system. I mean, b because it's 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 the most open interface. That's uh, the consequence of um, of this uh, quality. So a lot of functions implemented there to to protect uh, this radio link uh, connection, which the particular subscriber has with the network. But also uh, in other places, uh, let's say uh, intruder can be here. Uh, uh, it can be physical, uh, physical um, um, hack, or you can say a breach into the radio base station site, um, and he can connect to the base station and do some bad things. Uh, intruders can be here in the transport network. Intruders can be here on this connection. You can imagine that someone is uh, attaching some devices to the cables and listening to the to the electric signals. That technically there is such a possibility. But intruders can be even here in the in the in the heart of operators' infrastructure. Theoretically, these are insiders. These are called insiders. So the bad guys who work uh, formally for the operator, but who is who are doing the bad stuff. And uh, the last but not least, of course, these external networks, especially the internet. So you, you see a lot of bad guys here. Uh, obviously, hackers would like to have access anywhere, including the operator infrastructure, and that all is, um, that all need to be protected. 
So, but then let's see what kind of attacks are possible. So this is summarized here in this table. So first one is uh, so-called eavesdropping, eavesdropping or information disclosure. So basically the characteristic of this attack is that packet content uh, can be examined or checked in transit by the non-authorized user. Uh, so basically this is a confidentiality breach. So if someone can de decipher a packet here on this interface, for example, on radio interface, then he can listen to basically to the voice call. Uh, that's the example of this eavesdropping or information disclosure attack, <coughs> generic attack. Of course, technically it can be or might be uh, done differently. The second one is uh, information integrity breach or uh, otherwise it's called tampering. So the, the point is that it's a malicious modification of packets in transit. So basically someone here is doing the modification so, and you don't know about this. So you think that you get uh, kind of correct information, truthful information, but in reality it was exchanged by someone for, the, uh, for something else that he wants to do. The second, uh, probably it's most well known uh, publicly and in the media, it's the denial of service uh, attack. So it's a generic um, term, which uh, in the mobile network case describes um, kind of a flooding of the network with the fake request for service depleting its resources. So basically if you ping uh, or send a lot of packets to the core network nodes or the radio network nodes, they can, they can go down theoretically. So this is a kind of a threat uh, then, man in the middle, spoofing. Uh, spoofing means that you forge or you place in the origin of the packet um, another address. So basically you, s you send the packet, but, but the system thinks that this is a packet from another person. So you basically you spoof their, their identity. So this is a man in the middle. And this is uh, kind of equally applicable to all interfaces, but especially this kind of can be visible here on this radio interface. Then uh, w uh, there is such an attack uh, which is called replay. Uh, this is something like uh, when you use stored legitimate packets to execute, uh, execute malicious actions. So you imagine that you record a packet which is legitimate, which would be accepted by the network uh, in other circ circumstances, and you repeat it at one point in time and uh, for, one, for, for your transactions which you want to be succeeded and the network accepts it. So this is kind of replay. Uh, then the image or software poisoning. So this is quite obvious, a malware infection that could happen, for example, for the, to the devices. You, you know it, it happens. Uh, and uh, what is called the elevation of privilege. So this is uh, something when you, or not you, the hacker has admin or root privileges for, um, uh, for executing the malicious transactions on behalf of uh, other legitimate user. So this is kind of a threat landscape. So we need to do something with it. And it is equally applied to, to 5G as well. So basically what is shown here by these green shields is um, kind of a sign that we need to apply appropriate measures here uh, in these places in, in this generic mobile network, especially here on this radio interface, which as I said, is the most kind of um, sweet um, place for potential attackers to, to find, um, to, find uh, to breach into the network. So, and all these technologies about which we'll talk today are going to cover these uh, shields. Okay, let's go to the 5G use cases. Um, let's uh, talk about something which I called 5G main characteristics. Uh, this is quite simple, but anyway, we it summarizes well what 5G is uh, for, the, for the general public. Of course, it's much more than that, but uh, anyway. First of all, it's, it's of course speed. So theoretical speeds uh, which are possible are up to 10 gigabit per second per connection, so per device. This is a quite huge, uh, huge um, uh, speed, quite big. Uh, then the second one is uh, the big capacity of the network. So a lot of devices can transfer uh, lots of data simultaneously. So the, the network capacity and the radio interface uh, is designed in a way that the network allows it. And, it's much, and it has much more capacity than the existing networks. The third one is uh, so-called edge, edge computing. We will speak about this um, a bit later, uh, which is... Um, uh, in other terms called mobile edge computing, MAC. Um, this is uh, necessary for, for optimizations of particular applications. 
The next one is uh, the low latency of the network. So this is uh, a millisecond level latency for so-called mission critical communications. Uh, so it's much, much less than, than the current uh, 4G network. So the latency uh, can be very small. And the last, uh, last one uh, is the network slicing. We will also talk about this a little bit. Uh, this is, um, in essence, um, a dedicated uh, or guaranteed and secure mobile network resources for different use cases. So basically, for one use case, it can be one logical network inside the operator's network. And for another use case, it can be uh, another logical network optimized for this use case. So these are the main, so to say, building blocks or, let's say, um, main characteristics of 5G. Okay, uh, if you look um, into these uh, use cases into in a bit more details, uh, how, how this is structured in the, uh, in, the, in the standards, in the international standards, uh, there, is a, there is a standard uh, which, um, which is called ITU M2083. You can f uh, find it here. IMT stands for International Mobile Telecommunications. So this is a generic standard which is published by ITU, uh, International Telecommunication Union, which describes the future of the mobile, of all communications actually. And 5G is, uh, of course, one of them. And this uh, so-called use case uh, triangle uh, very well describes how this future communication is uh, kind of perceived. So you can, wh what you can see here is um, uh, are different use cases. Uh, for example, in this uh, um, uh, corner, you, you see kind of uh, very um, hang hungry for gigabytes applications. So uh, here in this corner, you can see the applications which need low delay. And here in this corner, you, you, you can see applications which, which need, uh, so to say, possibility to have massive uh, connections to the network. So a lot of, um, a lot of uh, billions of devices, uh, let's, let's say like this. And uh, this is called, uh, this, this um, um, kind of um, areas or groups of applications have um, names. Uh, the first one is named Enhanced Mobile Broadband. Uh, so, uh, what is enhanced mobile broadband? So, basically, this is uh, something which we uh, know very well. This is our communication over the mobile phone. Uh, basically, the web browsing or when we watch something. So, this is human-centric, as it is said here. It is basically the possibility to have multimedia services and data access with the high speed. Uh, it um, must provide wide area coverage with high mobility and, uh, let's say, medium data rates um, compared to, to other cases. And it must provide also the hotspot possibilities with a low mobility and high density of the users and with very high data rates. So hotspots, for example, can be uh, in, in, in the university here. Uh, the second one, so-called ultra-reliable and low-latency communications, URLLC. Um, what is it about? So, uh, mostly this is machine-centric communications, um, which require very high availability, very low latency, and uh, different mobility and data rates. Uh, one very good example of this is uh, this, self-driving cars, as it is said here. So, obviously, it requires very high availability, very low latency, and uh, sometimes uh, high data rates. So and sh it, it must be very reliable, or let's say industrial automation, as it is say here, or some mission critical application here. And the third one, uh, the third group of uh, use cases or services in this triangle is so-called massive machine type communications, MMTC. Uh, what is that? Uh, so this is purely machine-centric um, service. W what does it mean, machine-centric? So it is, it is meant for devices uh, like meters, like uh, different counters, uh, which have uh, 5G interface. Uh, so the devices usually should be low cost with long battery life. It could be up to several years uh, battery life in the device. Uh, usually these device devices uh, send uh, data with low rates and uh, low volumes. So they don't need to send a lot of data from, from the counters, for example. And they are, they are also latency tolerant and sometimes they have low or even no mobility. So the counter is installed uh, as, as uh, fixed, for example. 
So as you can see, this is, this is the triangle of all the 5G use cases. And it's important to understand it because um, security should be provided for all the use cases um, uh, which, which 5G uh, supplies. And what is um, important to know here in comparison to 4G, that uh, 4G, uh, which we have now, is, was designed having only this uh, use case group in mind, so enhanced mobile broadband. That's why we can say that, yes, with 4G, we have quite high speeds already now, which probably for the normal users are enough. Yes, that's also true, but these groups of use cases, they, are not, they were not uh, in the design of the 5G. That's an uh, important topic. Uh, and, and 5G is optimized for these use cases. Okay, let's move on. Uh, 5G system overview. Uh, what does 5G system look like? We have uh, just a couple of slides here. Um, this one, first, 5G system architecture. It might look a bit complicated, but in reality it's not. I will try to make it simple for you. Um, so this is uh, the architecture, the system architecture of the 5G network, a generic one. It is taken from the international standard, uh, third generation partnership uh, program uh, technical specification with this number. So you can find it uh, yourself in the, on the internet. And basically, uh, uh, as I already mentioned on the mobile threat landscape slide, uh, each mobile network consists of um, basically several main components. Basically, the device, the radio access network run, the core network, which, here, which is here quite big, but that's for purpose, and the external network to which you can communicate. That could be other operator, or it could be simply internet. So, uh, what's... Uh, we will talk about uh, the details of this core network here a bit on the next slides. Uh, what's important um, to say here is that um, actually a um, very important difference compared um, to the existing current 4G networks here is here in this, in this core network uh, blue, blue box. Yeah, um, the important is, is in the different architecture, which is, which is simplified, uh, which is uh, made more extensible and uh, in the same time more secure, and we will talk about this uh, a bit later. Uh, there are a lot of uh, network functions here. Uh, some of them are deciphered here. Uh, for example, uh, to name a few, uh, AMF, uh, which is called Access and Mobility Management Function. As the name suggests, uh, this function is responsible for, uh, for securing the mobility of, of, the, of the device, of the UE, user equipment. When the device moves in the network, this uh, entity or this network element uh, tracks, tracks the device and uh, provides uh, to him uh, the needed information and uh, when, when needed can connect the device to the network. Um, the second one is... Um, uh, so-called SMF, session management function. Uh, this device actually allocates the IP address to the UE, to the UE, um, uh, which is user equipment or a mobile device. And uh, it controls the PDU session. PDU session is basically the packet data unit session. So when you have a, a session, a media, which is being sent, for example, between the device and internet, it goes here. And this guy, this entity is controlling uh, this uh, flow. Also, we have um, uh, this unit, uh, which is also important, Unify, um, which is called UPF, user plane function. Uh, as the name suggests, user plane is basically the user data. Is when we talk on the phone, our voice packets is, is the user plane, is the, is, the, is the user data. And this um, entity is uh, switching this user data to the, to the necessary direction. So simply speaking, we can say that it's a, it's a router, which routes the user the packets with the user data somewhere. So yeah, it also does uh, so-called mobility anchoring when there are mobility events happening here. It, it does uh, some functions and uh, also this PDU packet data unit handling. Uh, so basically the routing of the user packets. So these, these were some functions of these networks. About some other functions of this network we'll talk uh, a bit later. Um, the next uh, slide. Um, I uh, uh, would like to highlight here the deployment models, so-called, um, um, which are available. 
so there are four of them actually main, uh, I would say four of them for deployment models of 5G uh, are possible. What does it mean by deployment model in terms of interworking with existing uh, 4G network? Uh, first, deployment model is called standalone LTA with EPC. Uh, EPC it's a Wolf Packet Core, 4G Core, and also in standardization it's called option one. So basically this is uh, the normal LTE which is uh, available for many years in the network. The second one, uh, which is shown here, is so-called non-standalone NSA, uh, NR. NR means new radio. This is the name of the radio interface for 5G. Uh, so for 4G, it was called LTE, long-term evolution, and for 5G, it is called new radio. And um, it is so-called option 3X from the standards. You might find it, uh, this naming somewhere. So basically, the, the essence of this is that uh, there is only 5G uh, base station here uh, from, from the whole picture of the, of the core network, which I, which I, show, uh, which I showed you um, on the previous slide. It's only a base station or a radio access network present uh, in the network. The rest is reused. The rest is reused um, infrastructure of the 4G network, which all is already available. And um, <clears throat> it is working uh, in such a way that uh, this LTE base station is a master, and uh, the 5G new radio uh, base station is a secondary. So it, it is uh, working like that. Um, the third one is uh, the standalone new radio with 5G core, so so-called option two. This is actually the, the simplified picture of what I showed on the previous slide. So this is both 5G radio and 5G core with all these multiple boxes um, which I showed. So this is kind of a target architecture which will be reached in some years in the networks worldwide. <coughs> And this is a kind of intermediary uh, or intermediate architecture, which is uh, a coexistence of LTE basically and 5G. So you have both uh, 4G infrastructure and 5G core uh, network here. Um, yeah, and they interwork together. The subscriber, when moving here in the radio network, can make a handover, for example, from LTE base station to the 5G base station. And also, they can be a handover from one core to another core controlling the call. For that purpose, there is an interface which connects these cores. So this is a kind of intermediary. So uh, currently, most networks are on this phase of, uh, so to say, development. Uh, most networks in the world, uh, I must say, I mean, most networks which, has, um, uh, which have uh, 5G uh, access, this one. And this will be the next step when 5G core will be introduced. They will, will live uh, together for some times, <laughs> for some time. Um, and uh, this is, as I said, the target architecture which, which will be reached uh, when 4G networks will be phased out, but it's a long time from, from now. Okay, uh, then let's uh, talk about a bit about the security challenges um, uh, which um, might be um, seen uh, for 5G by, yeah, might be foreseen, let's say, like this. Okay, uh, for example, uh, first one, uh, since we have uh, the explosion of connections, uh, as I mentioned, there could be multiple of uh, thousands of devices which are connected to the network, for example, meters or cars or something like that, which is called um, by the term IoT, Internet of Things, you know this. Uh, obviously, this could be a wider, as it said here, attack surface. So basically, you have more devices connecting to your network, so potentially the threat landscape is, is more, right? So this could be a concern. Uh, the second one, uh, DDoS attacks from massive amount of broadband devices. Since, as I mentioned, um, 5G is quite broadband, and in the same time, it allows to, to connect many devices to one cell, much more than 4G. So we can imagine that uh, phones can be infected with some malware, which sends dummy packets to the network, and the network will, will die, basically. Though. So this, this is a theoretical possibility. We can imagine this, let's say, like this. Uh, the next one, uh, mission critical communications. Um, uh, also, as I mentioned, industry, energy, automotive, health. So all these um, 
um, sectors of, of industry will be powered by 5G in the future. So you can have self-driving cars or remote soger surgery or industrial control uh, by 5G, whatever you can imagine. And of course, it must be secure. If, uh, if there is a breach in this uh, very important um, kind of sector of the industry, it's, uh, it, it, it might have much more consequences than just the hacker trying to hack the phone or to, to listen to, to voice communication, whatever. The next one, um, we will see it a bit later, well-known IT protocols. Uh, so uh, the 5G is uh, uh, introduced um, uh, IT protocol stack, uh, which we will see compared to, to existing protocol stacks based on the uh, well-known telco protocols. And this could potentially Theoretically, one might think lead to more vulnerabilities, but it's not like that. We will talk about this as well, but it's a challenge which 5G need to solve, 5G architecture. The next one, coexistence with legacy 4G and 3G, which could lead to multi-domain attack. As we saw in the previous slide, there is an intermediate step when you have a coexistence of 5G core and radio with 4G core and radio. And you can imagine that someone might breach into a less secure network, and from this network, he might come into four, 5G network, potentially. Yeah? So it's, it's a challenge which needs to be looked on and solved. Then the next one is uh, virtualization, network function virtualization, so-called NFE, and the usage of containers, and the public clouds. Um, also, as I mentioned, the core network and the radio network as well in the near future will be based mostly on the virtualized or containerized network functions. And also public clouds are coming into, into the telco domain. So uh, tele telecom operators will at some point in time uh, use the services provided uh, by, <coughs> by the public clouds, well-known names on the market. So how do we address that? What, uh, how do we solve this? The next one, communication downgrading to legacy vulnerable 3G, 4G. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, potentially, we might imagine that someone, um, you are connected to the 5G cell, which, is, uh, which you think is secure, but someone might jam the 5G cell with, with some technology, uh, destroy the radio signal, and then your phone will be reconnected to 4G or even to 3G, which is less secure. Potentially, yes, we can imagine that. So then 5G should, sh should solve it. Uh, the next one, 5G non-standalone architecture has 4G security baseline. What does it mean? It means that, uh, as I mentioned, non-standalone, it's an interworking between, um, not interworking, it's, um, it's a, this option two, the second box on the previous slide, which, which is mostly uh, widely deployed now. And the core network and the radio network master radio network is still 4G. 4G, 5G is just the base station. So we can imagine that this could be a risk. The next one, network misconfiguration and malfunction due to complexity. Yes, the network is uh, looks complex. There are a lot of um, nodes here and a lot of um, things here that we can imagine that someone can misconfigure the network and something can go wrong. Uh, then what else? Uh, Non-compliant and vulnerable devices from niche vendors. Yeah, we can imagine some, some garage, we can name it vendors of the IoT, for example, meters, which, which connect to the 5G network and they don't um, uh, respect the 5G standards, security standards, let's say like this, theoretically. Uh, then what is uh, called Isolation of network slices. Network slicing, we will, we will talk about this. I also, also mentioned it briefly. How do we provide this isolation? And how do we secure the mobile edge computing, we will, which we will also talk a bit later. And then, uh, the last but not least, uh, what is called nation state interference through 5G vendors. That is also a concern in the industry. So, for example, there is a concern that some vendors might be connected to some uh, to their respective nation states and they can have some you know software things in in their uh, network elements which which can send information basically to government simply speaking that's that's a concern you can you can find these concerns everywhere okay so this uh, 
what we need to look upon. That's why this exclamation mark here. Uh, and we need to find the solutions to these challenges. And uh, 5G effectively finds uh, the solutions to all of these challenges and, not, uh, and even more. Okay, uh, first one which I wanted to mention is this um, so-called uh, European Union uh, toolbox for 5G security. Um, this is a kind of um, a framework document which you can uh, also download yourself and which describes uh, different measures, uh, strategic measures and technical measures which are recommended to be taken to mitigate the main cybersecurity risks of the 5G networks. So basically, it is a, it's a framework document which is uh, valid for, for all European Union countries and um, according to my knowledge, uh, the Swiss uh, authorities also develop their regulations uh, in, in the 5G area. They are still developed uh, based on, on this framework document. So it is kind of respected. Um, and this document, uh, as I mentioned, the, uh, it is there to kind of point to the ways to solve these challenges which I previous, uh, mentioned on the previous slide. But this is generic. There are also technical measures uh, which, uh, which are actually the focus of this presentation. What technical measures are there in the 5G system to, to, to make it secure, basically? And uh, this is what we will talk about in the next section. It is quite big, uh, but I hope we will not spend too much time on that. Um, I'll try to be quick here. Okay, so this uh, slide look a bit, looks a bit busy, but um, uh, I will briefly just explain what is this, and we will um, we will go through some of these topics in, in the following slides. So basically, here is the comparison of uh, the LTE and 5G functions, uh, which provide uh, these 5G security enhancements, uh, which which we are talking about, which which make this 5G even more secure than the LTE standard and which effectively allow 5G to solve all the security challenges. So we will talk about this um, in the course uh, of the next slide. So for example, the network slice in edge computing is not available in LTE, but it's available in 5G. Signaling protocol stack, as I mentioned, it was a telco protocol stack in LTE, but now it's uh, IT protocol stack, service-based architecture, encryption, authentication, uh, authentication home control, uh, subscription concealed identifier, we'll talk about this, paging and roaming security. So as you may see even from this table that a lot of network components are, are made much more secure and much more, so to say, with the security in mind, uh, secure by design as, as, as it is called officially. So let's uh, move on a bit um, bullet by bullet here. What, what are these technologies about? and um, how do they provide additional security of 5G? First one is 5G network slicing. As it is said here, this is isolated logical, these are isolated logical subnetworks optimized and secured for different 5G use cases and tenants, users. So, um, as we saw on the use cases slide, there are different uh, users, potential users of the 5G infrastructure. So this could be normal users, uh, smartphone users, mobile broadband users, these could be ultra-reliable low latency communication users or critical machine type communication users which need low latency, high reliability. And this could be massive machine type communication users, for example, meters or counters or, or devices. And for all these users, actually, the networks must provide different characteristics, different delay, different throughput, different security, and in the same time, the networks must be isolated. And it is, you can imagine, this is an infrastructure of one operator. So how do you isolate it? So uh, network slicing is meant to provide this isolation. There are different techniques which are uh, used for that. I will not touch this into, de uh, into details because it's, uh, it's um, too much, a lot of information there. But it's everything from physical isolation, so you can uh, have physically separated network elements here and here for these users, to logical separation and uh, separation on, on the container level. So for example, you can have these network elements in one data center um, uh, and uh, separate them on the container level or on virtual machine level. 
Um, yes, so this is first one. The next one, mobile edge computing. Um, as the name suggests, uh, so what is, what is it about? Um, here, this is the architecture of the network, which I showed you on the first slide. But when edge computing is introduced, you have something what is called edge cloud. Edge cloud means that this is the some functions of the of the network or network elements which are close to the edge of the network. And edge of the network is this, is the base station. Why do we need this? Uh, basically because we want to optimize the performance for low latency applications, for example, augmented reality or remote surgery, you can imagine, or bandwidth heavy applications like uh, VR or HD video streaming. So basically we want these data from from this uh, from the device which needs this service to the particular application or data network to be switched very quickly without any delay without consuming any transport resources that's why we introduced this edge computing here and it must be secure definitely and in the same time we have here this central cloud with all other network elements which um, we saw on the first slide with architecture uh, core network elements which control basically the, the switching of this call if, if this, this call, for example, need to, need to go in, in, that, um, in that direction to this data network. So this is what is edge computing about. Okay, the next one. Uh, next one is uh, signaling protocols evolution. As I mentioned, um, 5G introduces a well-known IT protocol stack compared to the previous generations of the mobile technologies. Uh, the aim of this, uh, the purpose, why it was done, is to allow more flexibility and extensibility and in the same time provide more security compared to existing protocols. So if we look here um, on this um, protocol stack um, uh, models, so you have um, the layers of the protocol uh, from the physical layer, from the wire, let's say simply like that, up to the application layer. Uh, in 2G and 3G, we had so-called SS7 protocol stack, uh, signaling system number seven. <coughs> this is a very old protocol stack developed um, uh, many years ago in the previous century. Uh, of course, it's um, used, still used in the networks, but the problem with this is that it is not really secure because at that time the security was not, um, let's say, um, in mind of the designers, it was not so. Uh, it was considered that uh, these security concerns mi uh, might not touch this, uh, these protocols. In 4G, we, ha we have something what is called diameter protocol on top of uh, SCTP, stream control transmission protocol, on top of IP and the physical. So this diameter protocol is a bit more flexible, provide more um, uh, communication possibilities for 5G use cases, but it is also not really secure. And when we move to 5G, we introduce uh, HTTP2 as an application, as a main application protocol, and um, as well as JSON, uh, JSON uh, description of the objects which are transferred here in HTTP2. And for security, we, we introduce what is called um, Oh, sorry, we introduced what is called uh, TLS, Transport Layer Security. So this is a well-known uh, protocol which is uh, used um, everywhere currently um, for encryption and integrity protection of information. So basically this uh, transport is secured by, by means of using this uh, TLS protocol so that it's not possible to, to break in by the bad guys. Okay, the next one is... Um, uh, service-based architecture, what is it about? Uh, SBA, uh, it is called. Um, here, we see also the same picture, but a bit simplified as it was on the first slide. So basically what we have here is the mobile device, the radio access network or base station, and the core network of the 5G. So basically, uh, what it is about? Um, it's a new, uh, let's say, paradigm introduced in 5G compared to previous generation. It's kind of a common bus of the interfaces which is um, uh, introduced um, for the 5G network function. 
what is meant by the common bus, uh, it is, um, uh, it, the, the essence of this is that all these network functions basically communicate between each other using one and only protocol stack, the one which I already mentioned based on HTTP2, uh, compared to the existing LTE network where we had kind of full mesh of different interfaces. So when you want it, uh, when you need to introduce uh, a new network element here, new for, for new service, for example, in the network, you supposed or you needed to integrate it to many other net, uh, network elements using many different protocols, and that was really complicated. Here, it's not the case. Here, um, a specially designed uh, network function, uh, for example, uh, this one, network repository function, NRF, uh, is used um, in order to allow uh, very fast introduction of new application functions of new application servers into this architecture. So basically, they when they are connected to this bus, they automatically register to this network function, and then this network function used as a router for all the requests which need to be sent to this new function or from that new function. So it's a kind of um, a spider in the web, we can say. And this, this greatly simplifies uh, the network and uh, uh, increases flexibility and increases speed to introduce new services, as it is said about, said here. Okay, so this is called service-based architecture, and this is called, this interface is called service-based interface. So uh, this is not used in 4G network. Okay, yes, it's mentioned here that this is network function registration, discovery, and authorization. Okay. Uh, then we will talk about um, a bit about network protection mechanisms which are available. Um, uh, basically here you can also see the, the 5G network, the device um, here, um, and the access network, the base station, the core network with this network function, and um, another part of the core network uh, which is responsible for user data storage. And what, what we can say that there are three layers of security, so it's, it's very secure. Actually, even four, but four is not shown here. It, it will be shown on one of the next slides. So first one is called primary authentication. So when you authenticate or establish a security relationship between the device and, uh, and this um, user data management uh, domain, uh, which is located in the home network, which is called home PLMN. This is home network of the operator. So basically you establish kind of secure relationship between, um, between the UE, between the device and the home network at first when you connect to the network. Uh, the second layer of security is uh, so-called NAS, non-access stratum security, is when you enable a secure connection between, uh, protocol connection between the device and the visited network uh, here, VPLM, visited network. Um, it, it is done after this first step, after the primary authentication. Uh, this um, step provides integrity and confidentiality and also replay protection of all these messages which are being sent here uh, when the device connects to the network. And the third one, is uh, similar protection, uh, but for the access stratum. Access stratum means that this is an, an access network. So basically you provide integrity, confidentiality, and replay protection uh, here on this interface. So as you see, there are multiple layers of security, and even more than that are, are available, which are not shown here. So on the transport layer, uh, there is a security, etc. So yeah, it's very secure. Uh, the next one, a bit busy slide, I'm not going to the details, but just to, to give you a, an overview about, um, uh, about how secure 5G is compared to LTE. So this is so-called key hierarchy. So multiple keys are used in the network to provide ciphering and integrity protection. They are used in different places in the network. Uh, they are used uh, in... Uh, on, on the device as well as in the network. So you see this is network side and this is the device side. And network and device, when they establish communication, they negotiate these keys, they know these keys, and they allow to cipher and decipher the information which is, which is being exchanged. And as you can see, just uh, it's, it's, it's evident that there are much more keys in 5G. So it's, um, 
it's much more security, we can say, simply, simply speaking. So keys are, keys are introduced in, in many different network elements and they are kind of derived, what is called, from the subscriber secret key, which is kept in the network, in the user data management, and in your SIM card, in the device. So this is the main secret key, which is kept secretly, and from this key, all other keys are so-called derived when the, the call is being set up. Okay, what is important here to mention, one note is that th there is one small key which provides user data integrity protection, which is not available in 4G, and which uh, allows to mitigate several attacks uh, known in the industry, which are based on the, on the user data integrity absence in, in LT. So, and this is now solved in 5G. It's a small note, but it's important. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Uh, 4G authentication. Um, what is it about? Uh, again, a comparison. So I try to um, really simplify the procedure, even though it's uh, really complicated. Uh, so what is uh, an authentication, basically? Authentication is uh, when you want to be sure that you communicate to, the, to someone who you think he is, right? So basically the UE needs to be sure that he communicates to the network, to Swisscom, so this is the legitimate network, and Swisscom or another operator needs to be sure that he communicates to uh, this UE, not uh, the fake UE who is uh, not paying the bills, let's say like this, simply speaking, right? So this is what is authentication is about. So, um, <coughs> And here, um, you see how, how it is done. So basically, this is an exchange of information. So there are multiple messages being sent from the, from the device to the core network and, and back during the authentication. So, the, so when, the, when the device and network make sure that they know each other and that they trust each other. Uh, but simply speaking, um, <coughs> this is a procedure of um, producing uh, from these secret keys of this other session keys, which I mentioned on the previous slide, which I used for ciphering and integrity protection. Um, yes, and uh, what is important to mention here is that in 4G, authentication is done only in the visited network, so here, uh, and the home network just supplies the, the key material, so it sends the secret key from the home network to the visited network, and then the, the actual negotiation goes here. That can be... Um, reason for some uh, fraud or attacks which are, which are known. Um, and that's why, um, yeah, and uh, it's only one authentication, let's say, step between the device and the 4G network. And it uses different methods for LTE access and for Wi-Fi access, the methods are mentioned here. But it was improved in, 4G, in 5G in a way that now home network also participates in this authentication process, first of all. Uh, secondly, um, uh, there is a so-called secondary authentication introduced, which is uh, also possible based on, on certificates. So basically what you can do is that you can first of, all, first of all authenticate to the mobile network, and then with the help of the mobile network, you can also authenticate, for example, to your corporate network or your, to, to your campus network let's say like this, so it's even, even more secure communication, so it's like uh, additional layer of protection. So this secondary authentication was introduced in 5G. Yeah, and also new uh, authentication methods were introduced, uh, which I will not go into the details. They, they are named here. So um, uh, the next one is uh, so-called um, subscriber ID protection. What is it about? The thing is that in 2G, 3G, and um, 4G networks sometimes at initial connection of the UE of the device to the network, okay, um, the network uh, was asking for a permanent ID of the subscriber. So it was sending the identity request, and the net the UE or the device must answer with the with the IMC, so called uh, the permanent identity of the subscriber, which can be used for other malicious purposes. This was solved uh, in 5G. So now this permanent ID might be always sent encrypted over the air interface. So there is a special encryption which is done by using the so-called public key of the home network. Um, and this uh, 
identity is sent to the network encrypted. So the bad guy, which is located here on the radio interface, will not intercept it anymore. So this one I will skip, since we have five minutes left. Uh, five minutes left. Um, this one, um, 5G roaming and interconnect security. So also an important topic. So here you can see uh, simplified also um, diagram showing the 5G, how, how do uh, two 5G networks communicate basically. They communicate via so-called internetwork packet exchange network here and as well as an LTE. The difference is that uh, the new node is introduced in 5G, which is called CEP, Security Edge Protection Proxy, which protects all 5G interoperator signaling, which is, which is being sent basically wherever. You don't know where it is sent. So in 4G it was not protected, and that's why s different attacks were possible. So these bad guys were, were, were doing some bad stuff here. So that was possible and still possible in the existing networks if unless some measures are taken. But in 5G, it is solved uh, by the design, by the special nodes which encrypt and integrity protect the traffic which you send here. Okay, that was it uh, for this technical part. Um, then we have some useful links uh, with 5G security from different institutions, from 3GPP, GSMA, this European Union toolbox, uh, 5G Americas and Ericsson. So you can find a lot of useful information there about 5G security and a couple of slides about uh, start at Swisscom, we named it. So um, in Swisscom we have an, some entry opportunities for, for, for newcomers. So you can contact my colleague Simona Molle. So there is an address for, for additional information about that. Uh, if you are interested, yes, we have a s LinkedIn channel. So LinkedIn channel in Swisscom, yeah, uh, which you are welcome to visit. And thank you for attention. Sorry for taking maybe a bit more time. Questions? <laughs> All right, thank you very much for the talk. Uh, are there any questions in the room? All right. I'm really interested in edge computing, and you told us that edge computing is an integral part of. I'm how sorry, I oh, I can't you hear me? I don't hear you well. Maybe it's a mask, but okay, I will try to stay here. I'm really interested in edge computing, and okay. you said that uh, five if five G um, accommodates this. How does this exactly work? You showed us this slide where you said, okay, it happens next to the radio tower. So will a company be able to like? get containerized functions onto your network and then they run on the edge or are there separate companies that are allowed to kind of get into the network from next to the radio station? So is it a service that the telecom provider will provide or will there be private companies that mm -hmm. do that? Uh, I think it's, yeah, it's a very valid question and actually it was um, a bit reflected on that slide so you might have noticed that there was an application box there on this edge cloud which belonged to the cloud. Uh, by that I meant the cloud of the telco provider and it was also DN cloud, like a data network, which was external. So basically you can have both. You can have uh, telco nodes located there uh, in the edge which are needed to process this uh, traffic and you can have local service providers connected there uh, also near in this city for example or in this neighborhood in the city for example near the hospital if it's like a remote surgery let's say or near there uh, near the some industrial um, uh, factory which needs this connectivity so yeah it's both yeah hopefully I answered that <laughs> okay all right, thank you very much. I just want to remind the uh, um, viewers at home that they can uh, and ask questions uh, with the link in Slido in the description below. And now for the next question in the room. Okay, uh, thank you for your talk. I have a question. So due to the frequency spectrum where 5G operates, I heard it's like more difficult to like penetrate objects and walls. So. Um, I'm curious how many more uh, like B BTS do you need to build? And then my another question is like, I guess if you have already existing BTS, then what is like the relative difference between updating just the hardware and buying a new antenna for the existing BTS and building a new one completely from scratch? 
I'm sorry, the last part of your question was, uh, I didn't quite catch it, maybe it's a microphone or a mask, I don't know. <laughs> the first, okay, I tried to answer the first one. Actually, um, uh, yes, you're right, it depends on the frequency band. I cannot give you exact figures because I'm not a radio planner, I'm, I'm working for the security department, but it's, uh, it's yes, it's a, it's a bit more. So, the, as you know, the higher the, the frequency, the lower the, the cell range. So it's like physics, so you, can, you cannot do anything with that. But it depends again on the frequency because the frequency is quite different for 5G. I mean, the, the allowed frequencies. Uh, so, yeah, I cannot give you exact figure, sorry. <laughs> and the, the second part of the question I, I didn't catch, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, my repeat? question was how many times more expensive it is to build a new BTS from scratch than just to update the existing hardware at uh, existing BTS like okay. antenna and I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, um, actually, uh, also valid question, of course, but uh, I can say that this, it depends on vendor, basically. So if the vendor provides the possibility to, 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 to provide uh, the respective radio module for, for the BTS, then it's usually done as, a, as an expansion, as a software and hardware expansion. So, yeah, basically it depends. I, I cannot say for all vendors. I know that, um, yeah, in Swisscom we have uh, vendors which uh, do provide this possibility. So basically, yeah, it's, it's normal that. And it was also the case actually for the previous mobile technology. So when it was 3G, there were special modules provided, uh, software and hardware for the existing BTSs which allowed to upgrade it. So the, and of course you need to have a proper anten antennas. Uh, I mean, depending on the frequency range, of course, yeah. So. Yeah, so hopefully I answered. Yeah, next one. All right, any more questions in the room? Okay, so you said that we'll have like a period of time from which we'll transi transition from 4G to 5G. In this period of time, will we have the security, all these new features that 5G will bring, or do we have to update the whole network to be able to use these new features, mm -hmm. this new Yes, very security. good question. Thanks. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, of course, um, <clears throat> uh, some of these new features about which I talked, they are available only when, when the full 5G is available, at least when we have it will be available when there is an interworking, when there is a third block, which I showed, right? When you have an interworking between 4G and 5G, they already will be available. But on the current, in the current situation, when we don't have 5G core, we have only 5G radio, I mean, in most networks in the world, uh, some features are not available. For example, this identity encryption, because it requires the core network as well. So, yes, very valid point. Some, some topics will be already, but some, some not. So it's... Half, half, yeah. Let's say like this, yeah. Any more questions? Um, then I have a question. Um, you um, explained how the 5G um, infrastructure uh, is, or rather the, um, the new protocol stack makes the whole uh, network expandable. So do you think um, that the next iteration will be rather a, 5.1G or rather a 6G in the sense that uh, do you think that we will need a redesign like uh, 5Gs to 4G uh, soon? Soon. Um, or, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, if, if I understood your question right, um, <clears throat> yeah, so will we need uh, a major redesign again with the next generation, right? Uh, I mean, it's hard to say now, uh, but uh, from my feeling, so I have quite big experience working with the previous technologies of, of mobile generations. I mean, uh, this thing, this 5G is, uh, was designed for years. That's definitely, I mean, uh, what I mentioned, this service-based architecture with open uh, protocol. So you basically, you connect the network function, it, it does something else. Before, you, you, you had to do this complex integration to other uh, network elements, but now you just, simply speaking, plug it in and it discovers uh, itself the whole other network. So basically, I think that, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's for a long time. So I can so, cannot say about 6G and whatever, but <laughs> it is really uh, the, the design which, which, uh, which um, you know, combines all the, all the knowledge from the previous generation, you know, so it was taken into account. Yeah. 
Thank you. If there are not any more questions in the room, as there are none online, um, I will conclude this. Um, in favor of all of FISCON, we would like to thank you for uh, giving this wonderful talk. Um, thank you. Thank you for your attention. Yes. All right. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much. Danke <laughs> schon. All right. Um, so that wraps.